Greetings, fellow mathematicians. In our sixth example, we're going to incorporate initial conditions with using the method of undetermined coefficients. Now, I always find with my students, there's some common errors that are made, and we're going to take our time to point out what they are and then how to fix them. So before we get started, I want to just outline the three simple steps that we're going to follow. The only real new one we're going to add is using the initial conditions at the end. So step one is still to find the complementary solution. Step two, using undetermined coefficients right now, we're going to find the particular solution. And the only new part compared to the previous problems we looked at is we're going to use the initial conditions in the full solution, which is yc plus yp, the complementary solution plus the particular solution. All right, now some of the work is already on the board. This is all the stuff that we went through in the previous examples. So we'll just outline that very quickly here. So finding the complementary solution should be very straightforward. Convert to your characteristic equation. And for this example, you'll get two distinct real roots, negative one and two. So you get your complementary solution, a linear combination of e the negative x, and e to the 2x. Now, the common mistake I find with my students and a lot of students in differential equations is earlier when you first encountered homogeneous ODEs where the right-hand side was zero, you did use your initial conditions right here. But you didn't call that the complementary solution. You just called that your solution. So it looks like y, but be careful our full solution now is yc plus yp. So make sure you do not plug your initial conditions into only the complementary solution. Your initial conditions go into the full solution, complementary solution, plus particular solution. All right, so right now we have the complementary solution. This one's very straightforward to find the particular solution. Your non-zero right-hand side is a degree two polynomial, and we try a general degree two polynomial of the form ax squared plus bx plus c. All right, we did an example like this earlier in a previous video. Should be very straightforward. Calculate your derivatives, plug into the differential equation, the non-homogeneous differential equation, collect your like terms, and the trick I always like to do, we have powers of x, but we're missing some of them, so include them with zero coefficients. And that's where now equating coefficients, powers of x on each side, we get our system of equations. Your x squareds give you the equation negative 2a equals 4. Your x coefficients, negative 2a minus 2b equals zero. And then your constant terms, 2a minus b minus 2c equals the constant term there, zero. This system's very straightforward. You can probably get through it very quickly. The first equation gives you a. Plug that in here, you get b. Plug them both in here to get c, and you're done. All right, now this is probably several minutes worth of work but that's not the point of this video. We want to get to how we use or implement the initial conditions. So we have our particular solution. We have our complementary solution. Let's go ahead and get to how we use the initial conditions. All right, so we have our function initial condition. We can implement that right here in the function y. So if we use that, y of 0 equals 3. This is telling us x is 0. And the y value or function value is going to be 3. Notice that since x is 0, your exponentials give you e to the 0, which is 1. And then most of the terms from your particular solution go away. But you're going to be left with negative 3. And that's going to change your values for this non-homogeneous ODE's coefficients, C1 and C2, compared to what you did before 
where the right hand side was zero. All right, if we plug that in, our y value is three. Your exponentials become one, so we have c1 plus c2, and the middle terms here from your particular solution, they go away, but you're left with negative three or minus three. All right, and we can simplify that a little bit. This is one equation. So we can add the three to the other side. It looks like we get six equals C1 plus C2. So that's one equation for two unknowns. That was making use of the function initial condition. To make use of the derivative initial condition, we're gonna calculate the derivative of y, that should be pretty straightforward, just, just really using the chain rule here for e to the 2x and e to the negative x. So if we go ahead and do that, looks like we should get negative c1, e to the negative x plus two, c2 times e to the 2x. And don't forget to differentiate the terms from your particular solution. We get minus 4x, plus two, and then the negative three that differentiates to zero. Now we can plug in our derivative initial condition. Y prime of zero equals negative one. And again, that's telling us the X value is zero. And your derivative value is negative one. Plug it in, your left side becomes negative one. And on the right side, again, because x is zero, your exponentials evaluate to one. So we're left with minus c1 plus two c2. And notice here, x is zero, four x goes away, but we're left with plus two at the end. All right, and looks like I can, again, simplify this. I'm gonna subtract three and we get our second equation. This should be very straightforward from here. We've seen systems of two equations and two unknowns a lot. This should be like one of the things that you're hoping to get since it should be very straightforward for you. So I just like to stack my equations together. Six equals C1 plus C2. And I'll put the second equation right below. Negative three equals negative C1 plus two C2. And it looks like here I can quickly solve this with elimination. If I add these equations together, I can get the C1s to cancel out and it looks like I'm left with uh, three equals three C2. And that's going to imply that C2 is one. And if you go back to your first equation, if C2 is one, that means C1 should be five. All right, and this video could have been much shorter, but I wanted to go through this so you could see it. Again, the only difference is where you make use of your initial conditions in the full solution, YC plus YP. So with that, you can plug in your values for C1. We have that here, C1 is five, and we found C2 as one. All right, using the initial conditions is very straightforward. With the method of undetermined coefficients, the other method you're gonna learn about to solve for the particular solutions follows the same pattern here for how you implement initial conditions. That other method is typically variation of parameters, which we'll be getting to in some videos following this. If you enjoyed the content, support the channel, make sure to like and subscribe.